So, next thing I want to quickly touch upon, um, which I didn't mention before, which I'm a bit ashamed I didn't actually, is happy birthday to Virgil Abloh. That's a belated birthday because it happened on the 30th. And um, yeah, man. Uh, gone but never forgotten. It does. It doesn't feel like it happened flipping in 2021 when he passed, but it's already nearly been a year already, coming up in December that he passed, which is flipping tragic to say the least. Especially off the back of all this recent stuff happening now with Kanye going on the tear and stuff. But regardless of that, put that to one side for now. Definitely R.I.P. and happy birthday to Virgil Abloh. Um, definitely a big I say influence in the things that I done, and obviously somebody who I've been who I was lucky enough to meet for a very brief time in a previous workplace that I was at in terms of putting together an online streetwear course and he was a pleasure to deal with so that's definitely something that I'll remember him for but one thing that I kind of wanted to say in terms of you know honoring his birthday and kind of like a little story time from me was that um, when I was at this place that I was at prior and I was kind of helping to co-produce the entire online streetwear program that we had, which was basically aimed at loads of emerging brands who wanted to take the next step up. And the idea behind it was to take you from like PDF to like shop rail, right? That was kind of my thesis or my kind of um, um, theme that I had in my head from it, right? Take you from a PDF to shop rail. And obviously some of you guys will know, um, I am a big hater of people designers or brands that just show you line sheets and don't show you actual physical physical product right because i feel like the physical product is like you putting your money where your mouth is making a sample even print screen printing it even just like putting a bit of heat transfer paper you've gone through that effort of reversing the image printing all that sort of stuff just to kind of prove your concept and it kind of gives me a bit more faith as a prospective customer that you're going to follow through i feel like the pdf stuff is just like you kind of crowdsourcing approval and it's also kind of a weird procrastination thing right it's like you just you know yeah just put it out there so I wanted to create a program that I would have liked growing up because I've also been a serial procrastinator which is why I hate it usually the things you hate are the things that you kind of see in yourself so I wanted to do that thing and have it to be PDF to retail and at the time I was really really obsessed with kind of that whole crew right Ben Trill Heron Preston I kind of knew you know from afar uh, Matthew Williams of course and Virgil and I kind of saw his journey and I always thought he was the I always thought Virgil was the kind of best kind of archetype or best sort of person for a kid to growing up to follow because I think we can all agree now even in his passing we could all be honest and say he wasn't maybe the greatest designer in the world in terms of execution but the one thing he was good was his execution right in terms of him actually getting things done he got things done um there was always a theme a reasoning behind it it was probably way deeper than what we actually saw on the final garment and maybe we didn't give him enough credit for it because we didn't like the designs overall but there was always a thought and intention and an idea that went back into it and he just got things out there and it's no surprise that brands would want to queue up to work with him collaboration wise because they saw his work ethic he wasn't someone that kind of you know shirked working even with where I was at he would fly to these places at last minute notice be flying back and forth from Chicago with his family to come and film with us for a bit then fly to London then fly to, fly to Milan to do off-white stuff like he was everywhere and he clearly somebody like you saw like he kind of enjoyed the he kind of enjoyed the influence of lifestyle which I think you are meant to which I think a lot of people kind of, um, what's that word called? They romanticize that influencer journey, right? The idea of like, oh yeah, you've made it now. You've kind of, you know, shown at this gallery, you've got this representation, you're going to be showing a film at this place, um, at this film in fair, you're going to be, you know, maybe doing a collaboration with this brand. But then when you suddenly get there, it can be a bit daunting, right? All the pressures that you need to do, especially if you're a designer, the resort collections, the capsule collections, the collaborations, the media obligations, all this stuff can kind of get a bit too heavy. But I always felt like with Virgil, like he was made for that. Do you know what I mean? He looked forward to it. The more he was, the more he was given, the more kind of it reaffirmed that he finally had made it. And I think I remember even saying one finally time, one time in an interview about he knew he kind of slightly made it too when he saw his stuff being copied on like places like Tab Out and stuff, right? Like off-white stuff was like reselling or the people selling fake versions of those, of the flipping belt that I've got on there as on that kind of stuff. So that was really something I kind of saw in him that was cool. But another thing that I really did like, obviously, and obviously just time with the streetwear program, sorry, that I was putting together, I always thought he'd be the perfect person to kind of lead it. And it was funny because when I applied for the role at that place, I wasn't aware that they were going to even start a streetwear program. So I I kind of applied because I liked what they were doing because they were doing other programs, you know, within the industry. They were doing hair and makeup. They were doing also doing hair, hair and makeup, photography and other things. And I just wanted to get involved, basically, because I thought it was cool. And um, 
you know to kind of give back and whatever maybe i lend my hand that way and obviously it was a thing that maybe allowed me to be like still fashion adjacent without being in it because i was going for a little bit of a hate and love it of the industry sort of thing but i still wanted to be involved so that was a perfect thing and then i remember when i went to the interview my kind of you had we got set we had to do this presentation thing where we had to kind of like you know um what if we were going to do a course what would it be and i obviously picked street because that's something that i kind of you know i've loved from day dot and um I picked for the course leader, funny enough, Virgil Abloh. That's who I picked in the course leader thing. So it was funny when I was presenting my ideas, I was doing the whole thing. I was really going through an interview and really kind of showing my stuff and showing my little flipping keynote that I had presented with all these little funny graphs and charts and flow things and illustrations of how people could do and book recommendations and, you know, ways of thinking, blah, blah, blah. And at the end, they're like, yeah, you got it. Because essentially, you know, I kind of had already written half of the program in those kind of slides that I presented because they already had Virgil signed up. So that was pretty sick. And then of course, getting to meet him was also awesome as well. And yeah, man, I, I had a great time working with him. But one of the things I can kind of really claim that I fucking think was a real kind of feather in his cap that he kind of allowed me to basically enjoy and something that kind of gave me the inspiration to kind of i don't know continue on with this flipping fashion thing even though it's kind of it's kind of maybe a bit, bit disillusioned sometimes here and there was definitely my first ever ever fashion show experience like going to see one was when i went to see this collection here on screen which is the off-white fall 2016 menswear collection and if you're not aware of this this is the one collection where the, the infamous picture the famous picture of um, ian connor and virgil running down the, the the runway together holding hands and stuff i think arms around each other that's where that famous picture came from when i was there um and it was my first ever fashion week to go to you know my first ever sorry fashion show i've been to a fashion week before i've been outside and at loitering but i've never been to an actual legit show and um it was interesting because i'm pretty sure yeah i am pretty sure that maybe a year before that i went for something else i forgot what i went for and i had a horrible time and i think I'm, it kind of reminded me why i didn't really like paris as a city i thought our city is overrated fucking shit then i go a second time of with the invitation of off-white um i also have the ability to go to the after party i also have the ability to go to see showrooms and also have to be just to be around right i didn't even meet anybody i didn't have any friends there i didn't even even meet virtual at the time there but i just was around right because you're so busy and i wasn't really trying to you know grab them for anything but just to experience that and being around that ambiance of a show it changed my entire perspective of that city overall and it made me love it all together and i've def definitely saw and understood why some people would say paris is one of those cities where you kind of have to even if you don't know people just being around the people who know people can kind of help you enjoy the city a bit better and i definitely loved it i remember one thing that kind of sticks out the most is just me walking around that city for like hours on end listening to music going to record different bookstores um you know stopping off at d different bars and restaurants to have wine and shit like i even remember buying a fucking pack of cigarettes also you know ingratiated in the space that i was in at the time also all the location i was in and i don't smoke so that was flipping you know hilarious to come back with a flipping raspy voice coughing at my asshole because i've attempted to be a core parisian guy and start smoking and shit um but the show itself i remember it being like in an area that was kind of near the hood so that was decent to see because i would never seen that before when i went to paris i'd always stay in the middle and you know or the, the kind of the inner ring so when you start going towards the outer rings is when you start to see a lot more brown and black faces and that was pretty cool to see that and to see how the energy and the vibe changes completely when you go in those sort of spaces so that was quite cool and then to go to the after party was nice as well um to see the people taking street style pictures outside the show was freaking sick and just to be at the show itself and see models running walking down the runway had it organized shit all of that was fucking eye-opening it really fucking was and i think in overall too especially these early collections before like you know he was really in his bag i thought these early collections from virgil especially this one i went to go see where maybe he's like best interpretation of what he was trying to go for off white at the time that he was around because i always thought to myself like why does it look so unpolished and unfinished and just a little bit off and then i remember having this kind of main this kind of um this revelation that maybe he wasn't even going for the whole like I want to be Karl Lagerfeld mid thing. Maybe obviously we saw that because of his output and the amount of projects he was working on. But maybe he was trying to present his looks or what he viewed fashion to be in more so a Jun Takahashi model. 
and with undercover because I feel like there's nothing that links any undercover collection to the previous one. They're all just different. It's like they're different movies, right? They're, they're, they're basically characters of different movies um, that they're actually doing, but there's nothing that ties in. There's no prequel. It's not a sequel. It's just various different looks. And I feel like that's what he was kind of going for when he was designing his men's. Every show was the opportunity to like play around with another world, um, explore different themes, um, different ideas, whatever it may be. And it's just kind of build upon something, but there was nothing that tied any of them together. Zero nothing i don't think so actually that might be the debut of the actual um harness belt you know the much derided one which is strange because i still got mine because that's the one i was you know personally given by him but i don't know why this is hated so much this yellow belt it's really interesting he went from being something that was incredibly cool for like a really short minute and then suddenly just like went out of corners so now when you wear it people look at you and think you're corny even though i like to wear it because i think it's a cool little personal tribute that i kind of have you know for myself but people look at it and really deride it they kind of look down upon you if you actually have that belt which is fucking strange because that one time it was legitimately one of the coolest belts you could wear then it kind of just suddenly went out of flavor or maybe it never was i'm not too sure but i remember in my little um you know my little world it definitely was and it kind of went out of favor straight away but i definitely think he was maybe aiming more to be like a john takahashi with undercover than he was maybe trying to be Karl lagerfeld with his various different brands that he was working at all the same time and of course that's the famous picture there of virgil and ian connor running down the uh, the runway at the end there looking absolutely pleased with himself so that was pretty decent and sick to see in real life right so definitely something that i kind of have to thank virgil for because i think without him i definitely would have gone because i'm never going to make the effort to try and apply for a ticket i'm not emailing anybody i'm not trying to enter a raffle i don't give a fuck about all that stuff I'm not liking your comments or leaving a comment on instagram to get a ticket no thank you um so the fact that i was invited to go because of the work that i was doing because obviously we were working with him to see it firsthand was fucking sick i took some pictures added it to a blog that we did internally that you know probably no one saw but it was cool just for me to go there and kind of ingratiate myself in it and you know essentially reawaken my quote-unquote passion for fashion it definitely did because it allowed me to see what it is like actually working in it kind of day to day right the kind of fun of it of being around this thing that you legitimately live for the stuff that you kind of obsess about uh, and to kind of see it all there was really 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 cool to see so um definitely something that i don't take for granted in the slightest and definitely something that i was kind of really privileged to kind of enjoy at that certain time and definitely something that i will kind of remember um bit mr big va for until the end of time so definitely belated happy birthday to that man in it because he definitely helped me with that one i'm not gonna lie he definitely helped me with that one.